here which is love death and robots which you finally watched in like one day i, I binged it yeah <laughs> yeah what I did you think it. of uh firstly what did you think of season one <laughs> you should tell people what what happened yeah when i was watching it when i pressed play dude the f i tell i tell this guy to watch season <laughs> one catch up to season two <laughs> and he what he does I'm like this is pretty good yeah what he does um he watches season one the first two episodes and then i don't know what happened automatically or something <laughs> he just watches this episode three of season two which is basically the best looking episode of the entire show <laughs> and now everything he watched is just below that yeah it was uh it's... i was it was a pretty much a letdown after that i was like this, this this love dead and robots thing is pretty cool and and i watched the best episodes <laughs> but um yeah look i look i don't really like these what are they called anthology seasons where it's different story different characters each, each episode like i've watched twilight the kind of reboot of twilight with, with twilight um um you know different kind of characters different stories mysteries and stuff like that i've watched the kind of american horror stories kind of similar like that each season different uh stories even though some of the same characters or same actors pop up but the, the animated style in this just changes each episode yeah. and some of the stories yeah. some of the stories i'm interested in some of the stories i don't care for some of the stories that i wish well i'd watch an entire series about just this episode yeah. about these characters and i just think it's it's actually interesting because for somebody who kind of thinks of weird things in my head when i'm daydreaming this is a great show for me because in these episodes, you don't have to come up with a start or an ending. You just have to tell a weird, interesting, exactly. 15 minute, 10 minute story. Exactly. And actually, it would, I would actually love to work on something like this because I think my mind would be crazy enough to come up with some weird shit that yeah. doesn't have to make sense. But then, then people are thinking after, oh, what did that mean? Because you know? that's what I was doing. I was like, it made me kind of reflect on maybe our world. And, and like, there's certain parts of some of the episodes where some of these characters go through something that's pretty massive and they, they risk their lives and you think, oh my God, they, they made it through that terrible de uh, terrible occurrence. And then the camera pans out and it shows the planet. And then yeah. it, it, it zooms out even more and it shows 30 more planets. Yeah. And then it, it's, it, it's, it pans out even more, it just shows space. And you're like, oh, does that even matter? <laughs> when you, it makes you really think. Yeah, I, I watched season one, but I have to say some of the episodes are just old. wild. Like they just wanted to have some fun, crazy. and some animator just wanted to make something crazy, and then just they said, "Go ahead and do it." And some of them are so deep, yeah. and you know the animation is great and it's emotional and all that. And the on the other end is just basic, <laughs> weird, random shit. So I love, it's I love all of that. Yeah, it's pretty awesome because, but like, as I said, right, in season one, there's 18 episodes. And in season two, I was like, oh, there's only eight in this one? Yeah. But I think the quality has increased in season two because some of the episodes in season one, I was like, oh, that's fine. But I just don't, I didn't really attach myself to those characters as much. Yeah. But then in season two, I did. And I really loved the Michael B. Jordan episode. I couldn't tell if it was CGI right? or if it was visual effects. But it was actually just him at times. Like, there's a part in, the ep in that episode he's in this kind of room and this robot detects any movement and the robot's kind of defected or something like that or maybe that's the way it was always programmed but whatever it moves it wants to kill michael b jordan gets attacked and he has to lay on the ground yeah and there's a nice sequence where he's laying on the ground he's coming up with a plan how to, how to try and beat this robot and i couldn't tell if it was him cgi or what they were trying to do i just thought it was actually really well done yeah. and it was cool there was also another episode in that no, episode, I, I, some I, scenes I, looked like it was his face was CG, but some looked like it was real. So th I I yeah, don't know yeah. if they are trying to add that you know animation type thing on his face to make it blend seamlessly yeah. or something like that. Because even in the first season, there was a um, episode with Mary Elizabeth uh, Weinstead, and uh, even after watching all the animated stuff, I just randomly turned that on. Right, I don't know what. I'm just watching it in sequence, right? So that yeah. turned up, and I was yeah. just guessing: is this is this CGI or is this real? And then the hair yeah. and the eyes and mouth, all that that gives it yeah. away. So they're just so I, close I, to perfection, but they still cannot just you know be hundred percent um, fake real. Yeah, 
because you can always tell yeah. by the eyes and the mouth and the teeth lips i think that's really really hard and it's not just the movement there's something very minute that we cannot put our finger on but we can we can tell it when we see it right um the hair yeah. the water used to be the um you know most difficult years ago but that is just mastered now the water and hair just looks it looks perfect now but you know the yeah. mouth and the eyes are still just yeah it, it's really like i'd love to see a, a, a full series on some of these episodes because yeah the, the cg the cgi or the, the anime style animation style is, is pretty pretty breathtaking at times and I don't want to spoil. I don't want to spoil that because maybe some people because it's it's a popular show, but not everybody probably yeah. has watched it. Maybe I don't want to spoil too much. But like just one episode in particular, I think it's called Pop Squad. Yeah, the third episode. That's my favorite one. It's it, it's a, it's a really deep episode, man. Because because in this world, I think what I gathered from it is that um, if you kids aren't allowed, yeah. um, next generations aren't allowed, you can you can either live forever, or you can have you can try and have a kid and you know but you're not really supposed to so these kind of blade runner type characters who just go around killing children and it reminded me of blade runner because of you know the, the hunting like ryan gosling's character yeah. hunts down david batiste's character and kills him you know you're hunting down your own kind uh, and then there's kind of i just got real blade runner vibes from it i thought this the style of it was pretty cool and it's pretty deep and at the end of the episode what happens kind of stays with you after as well so I thought it was a pretty deep yeah. and dark episode as well, uh, and I, I really enjoyed that one. I think I one would have most... watched a full movie with that, even just animation. Yeah, yeah, and that, and that character, the 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 main yeah. character who was the the guy who goes around killing these children, his character development in the space of what is it, ten minutes, episode twelve minutes, yeah. is 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 amazing, isn't it? It's it's it's, it's pretty good, and it kind of puts movies to shame. Yeah, because in some movies you don't get character development, or even in some shows that are ten episodes. You don't get character development as good as this one did. In, 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 in what? In, <laughs> in what? That was that was a few weeks ago. Now, guess we move on. <laughs> uh, so you know, I think I think that's I think that's pretty amazing. No, I really do. And did you like? You know, what was in a uh, cool episode was the the drowned giant. It was the last episode of season two? That was like a poem. Yeah, just like a really long poem. I I, I like yeah. that one as well. At first, I thought, why is he just keeping on talking? And then I realized, oh, it's just, he's just narrating the story and all that. And I even the animation in that one, it's just flawless. Like um, the whole body and the textures of his um, hand and foot, it was amazing to watch. And when he goes onto his face and there's his eyes and teeth, you know, it was just mind blowing. It didn't. Um, it, a lot of there's a lot of sexual scenes in these um, episodes as well. Yeah, and uh, I wasn't expecting that. And uh, yeah, it's just maybe that's something to say to people as well. If you want to watch it with family or something like that, maybe not. Yeah, uh, I mean they have the rating I think uh, for the show. I do. Yeah, I, I wasn't expecting. That. I just clicked play and I expected just people, yeah. just these CGI characters having having a good time. So. Yeah, I mean the the. Yeah. Um, I don't know which episode it was in the first season. Um, the one with the um, battleground and they have they morph into mech characters and you know um, have a fight in the ring. Um, that was pretty like it was there was a sex scene in that almost yeah and yeah did you which which one of these episodes was maybe your least favorite episode least favorite um that's really hard to pick in this season because I liked almost everything um so yeah. I probably would say between the <laughs> this one um between the grandma thing and um and the futuristic you know the big whale one um yeah i think it's between those Dude, two um, yeah like the the tall grass one where there's just there's this train yes, that was um, good on the go and it just it just stops and this guy kind of gets off to have a small mm -hmm. the train just magically stops for some reason and um he goes into the long grass obviously and there's these kind of monsters and they start chasing them around but he kind of only takes a few steps into the long grass but then he's lost straight away so and there's these weird monsters running after him but that was kind of a, a short enough episode where not much really happened I, I, it's not like it's a terrible episode there's just some of these episodes where not much happened like snow snow in the desert 
is one where this character who lives forever and if he loses a limb he can grow too. back. The twist that at was the a end pretty was good nice. episode. I would like. <laughs> yeah, I would have liked to. That's another episode that I would have liked yes. to been a series or something because I thought the, the the CGI style there was pretty cool or whatever style they use. But yeah, and there was also a creepy one as well. All through the house was a reimagining of Santa yeah. Claus. That was funny. And that was funny kind of, and creepy. It's like these, it's, yeah, it's like these kids kind of um, excited for Santa Claus. It's Christmas night, of course, and they're laying in bed and they hear some noise and they go down. Uh, I don't want to spoil it, but like it's it's not the traditional Santa Claus. And I think that's something for us as like as people and even as kids, we we think of Santa Claus because he's presented in a certain way, you know, yeah. because of marketing. Exactly. You know, like, Coca-Cola, uh, um, like Santa Claus is red, got to do with Coca-Cola because of branding, marketing, and stuff like that. It's a big, it's a big fat man yeah. with a, a big red coat, he's carrying a bag and a big beard. Yeah, because that's what we're told. That's what we're. That's and that's not like that's such a small thing, but also like what have what have we been fed by, say, governments or by politicians or by other media outlets about things that are presented to us in a certain way, but they're not actually that way because we've never really come face to face with that. Yeah. And these kids. Come to come face come face to face with this Santa Claus that they've been told about, and you know what? He delivers presents and it's, he he gives them toys, but it's there's a different spin yeah. to it, and I actually like that. And that's that's a good um, thing about everything in life. It's not maybe things aren't always yeah. as they are told to you, but look yourself. So I I, I did like that one a lot, and yeah, it was I, funny. That's, <laughs> at, the, at the at the end, it's funny as the kids. That's what the, that's what I loved about this, you know this show basically like all um, both seasons all episodes i'm like it's it it just has to be an idea right so the idea for this amazing episode was just what if santa wasn't how you thought he was didn't look like how you thought he was right that's it yeah. that one line just gave birth to an amazing episode so i just i just love these you yeah. know um ideas that can be turned into short films or you know anthology series like this and i'm so happy that this got renewed and um scott here says they split the season um to um order uh season three is already coming um uh, coming out next year and so i think they released half a season hmm, all right that's good that's cool i uh, next 18 18 episodes is still a lot to watch in a season so maybe that's probably the better thing to yeah but Overall runtime is pretty low, right? For season two. Yeah. <laughs> but again, yeah. that's but, like, that's very high quality animation. It takes years. So But but also if we're reviewing this show and it had eighteen episodes right now, if we were reviewing season one, like we probably wouldn't be putting the spotlight in some episodes yeah. probably deserve it. Here now with eight episodes, we get to kind of discuss, theorize, break it down, it stays what it's after. Yeah. So yeah, I think eight episodes for uh a discussion point of view for uh you know how it affects you as a human being point of view i think is, is more beneficial to you because you can if you watch 18 episodes some of them get lost some of them you just yeah. forget because you're them like this that's yeah, these true. ones are kind of like a yeah so uh in the, in yeah, the first one, one of the I, favorites I, of mine was uh zima blue uh and a lot of people <laughs> seem to like that one too i don't know it's just something it's not even the animation is great or anything it's just the style of it and the context behind it and how ridiculous the ending was <laughs> it's just just wild and i just love that yeah and it, you, like you, you don't need an explanation of these stories whatsoever you don't need to if there's a monster you don't need to find out where he came from it's just you're in this story right now at this point of view or this this point of this character's life or this monster's this monster's existence. So that's pretty that's pretty awesome. So um yeah, and I think Scott was saying there's some stories you can based on books or something like that as well. That's pretty cool. So, oh that's nice. Short stories. Yeah. I'm also yeah, I'm, I'm also glad that buying... um Tim Miller and David Fincher are doing this because they're big names and they know what to do. Yes. Of course they'll bring on good stories. Hopefully Fincher doesn't leave this like he left. Uh, mine hunter still i'm still sour over that really dude so. that's just one season like why and it's this time it's not even netflix's fault <laughs> the director doesn't want to yeah. come back i'm like really yeah that's the kind of that's the only show that kind of resembled a little bit of true detective for me i, I loved true detective season one i think is the best single season of television ever not series but single season season one and 
Mine Hunter was giving me some of those vibes again. But hopefully, it comes back at some stage. Nice. Yeah. I sh- there's I great minds True involved. Detective, then. Oh man, True Detective is brilliant. Uh, season one is just a masterpiece, in my opinion. Season two is a kind of a it, it's a good cop show if it wasn't titled True Detective. True Detective season three with Mashallah Ali, I was supposed to have Ken Blade. He did a pretty good job. Ray Fisher uh, is in it too, right? Some, yeah, he 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 does he plays um his son in it, so he he does a he he's a small role, but he's kind of he's a beneficial role to the story and to the character. The character in the in the series is kind of a he's an anchor towards other characters. So I I think it's um I don't know if a virtual detective if we'll ever get back to the heights of season one. I think it's just a it's just an amazing show. But yeah, this show here, I'm glad that you got me interested in of that and robots. Yeah, it was, I was it was like when way, season worth, one worth my time. When season one came out, I was just hyping it up for everyone. And then it just kind of went away because, you know, not a lot of people like to watch animation. And um, there's literally just nothing very exciting when you pitch this show to someone, you know, except showing the concepts and pictures and, you know, showing just one episode will get you into it. But to get there, there's just not much to pitch. Unless you already like Black Mirror, then you can just say that, oh, it's just like Black Mirror, but, uh, you know, it's animated. But once you get into it, it's just I crazy. <laughs> I probably wouldn't have watched this when you said, we're going to be reviewing Love, Death, and uh, Robots on the show. And I said, oh, okay, I'll watch it. But because I'm not really into anthology stories. Yeah. Because I like Me neither. to be attached to the stories, to the characters. Yeah. Uh, you know, so like I said, that's, that's why I like series or movies because you have time to breathe with these characters and this is only 8, 10, 12, 15 minute episodes you don't have too much time to be attached to them but I think the writing team involved with these episodes did a good job of you sympathizing for these characters even though you don't know them where they came from you know how they are the way they are where they are but you see them in a vulnerable situation and I think as a human being you want to see that person or whatever maybe come through that uh, moment so I think it's, it reflects a lot about ourselves I think watching this too yeah, I'm definitely, you know, waiting for season three and it's one of my favorite shows ever. So um, I'm also waiting for Mo 